AI doomers are driving me mad. And AI, the fact that we yeah. don't have any intelligence yet, I call AI autonomous informatics just to make people grumpy. Yeah. Um, and you, it, You're saying we're quite far away from AGI. I think that we have no conception of intelligence. And I think that we don't understand how the human brain does what it does. I think that we are, neuroscience is making great advances, but I think that we have no idea about AGI. So I am a technological, I guess, optimist. I believe we should do everything. The whole regulation of AI is nonsensical. I mean, why would you regulate Excel other than the fact that Clippy should come back and I love Excel 97 because we can play, um, you know, we can do the flight, flight simulator. Uh, I'm like, sorry, in Excel? Yeah, have you not played the flight simulator in 97? In Excel 97? Yeah. 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 What does that look like? It's like wireframe, very, very basic. But mm -hmm. basically, I think it's X0, Y0, shift, and it opens up and you can play the flight simulator. Oh, wow. Wait, wait, is it using Excel? Excel, Excel 97. Okay. I resurrected it the other day and saw Clippy again for the first time in a long time. Well, Clippy is definitely coming back. But you're saying we don't have a, a great understanding of what is intelligence, what is the intelligence... I am very uh, frustrated. Un, 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 underpinning the human mind. I'm very frustrated by the way that um, we're AI dooming right now. And people are bestowing some kind of magic. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's go back a bit. So you said about AGI. Are we far away from AGI? Yes, I do not think we're going to get to AGI anytime soon. I've seen no evidence of it. And the AI doom scenario is nonsensical in the extreme. Yeah. Um, and the reason why I think it's nonsensical, but it's not nonsensical, <laughs> And I don't think there isn't things we should do and be very worried about, right? I mean, there are things we need to worry about right now, what AI are doing, whether it's fake data, fake users, right? I want authentic people or authentic uh, um, data. I don't want everything to be faked. And I think it's a really big problem. And I absolutely want to go on the record to say I really worry about that. What I'm not worried about is that some fictitious entity is going to turn us all to paper clips or, or de detonate nuclear bombs. Or, I don't know maybe, I don't know, anything you can't think of. Why is this? Is a, and I'll, I'll take a very simple series of logical arguments. And, and this is, the, 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 the AI doomers are, have not had the correct, and this is, had not had the correct, they do not have the correct epistemology. They do not understand what knowledge is. And until we understand what knowledge is, they're not gonna get anywhere because they're applying things falsely. So let me give you a, a very simple argument. People talk about the probability, P-Doom AI. Um, I can, we can work out the probability of an asteroid hitting the planet. Why? Because it's happened before. We know the mechanism. We know that there's a gravity well or that you know, space time is bent and stuff falls in. We don't know the probability of AGI because we have no mechanism. So let me give you the, another one, which is like, I'm really worried about AG. What's AG? AG is anti-gravity. One day we could wake up and anti-gravity, you know, is discovered. We're all going to die. The atmosphere is going to float away. We're going to float away. We're all doomed. What is the probability of AG? We don't know because there's no ne mechanism for AG. Do we worry about it? No. And I don't understand the current um, reason for these for the for certain people in certain areas to be generating this nonsense. I think they're not doing it maliciously. I think we're observing the emergence of new religions, how religions come, because religions are about kind of some control. So you've got the optimist saying AI is going to cure us all and AI is going to kill us all. What's the reality? Well, we don't have AI. We have really powerful machine learning tools and they will allow us to do interesting things. And we need to be careful about how we use those tools in terms of manipulating human beings and faking stuff, right? Right. Uh, well, let me... Uh... Let me try to sort of steel man the AI doomers argument. And actually, I don't know. It, it, are AI doomers in the Yudkowsky camp saying it's definitely going to kill us? Because there's a spectrum. 95%, like, I think, is the plus. limit. Yeah. 95% yeah, plus. That's no, the, not, not plus. But, I think, I don't know. I was seeing on Twitter today various things, but right. I think Yudkowsky is, is at 95%. But to belong to the AI doomer club, is there a threshold? I don't know what the membership may, is. May, maybe. And what called, are the fees? I uh, think. <laughs> well, I saw. I think Scott Aronson. Like, I was quite surprised. Had put two. I I'm, I saw this online, so it could be wrong. So sorry if it's wrong. Um, says two percent. But the thing is, if you were to, go, if you, if someone said there's a two percent chance you're going to die going into the lift, would you go into the lift? 
in the elevator for the yeah, yeah, uh, elevator, American yeah. English speaking <laughs> audience. Uh, well, no, not for the elevator. So I would say anyone higher than two percent. I mean, like I, I mean, I think there's a zero percent chance of AGI doom. Zero. Just to push back on the on the argument, where at the end of zero on the AGI, we can see on Earth that there is increasing levels of intelligence of organisms. We can see what humans with extra intelligence were able to do to the other species. So that is uh, a lot of samples of data, what a delta in intelligence gives you. When you have an increase in intelligence, how you're able to dominate a species on Earth. And so the idea there is that if you have a, a being that's 10x smarter than humans, we're not going to be able to predict what that's going to, mm -hmm. what that being is going to be able to do, especially if it has the power to hurt humans, which you can imagine a lot of trajectories in which the more benefit AI systems give, the more control we give to those AI systems over our power grid, over our, our nuclear weapons or weapons of any sort. And then it's hard to know what a ultra intelligence system would be able to do in that case. Again, you, you don't find that convincing. I think this is a, I would I would fail that argument one hundred percent. Here's a number of reasons to fail it on. First of all, um, we don't know where the intention comes from. The problem is that people think they keep you know with I mean, watching all the hucksters online with the prompt engineering and all this stuff. Where when I talk to a typical AI computer scientist, mm -hmm. they keep talking about the AI is having some kind of decision-making ability. That is a category error. The decision-making ability comes from human beings. We have no understanding of how humans make decisions. We've just been discussing free will for the last half an hour, right? We don't even know what that is. So the intention, I totally agree with you. People who intend to do bad things can do bad things, and we should not let that risk go. That's totally here and now. Mm -hmm. I do not want that to happen, and I'm happy to be regulated to make sure that systems I generate, whether they're like computer systems or, you know, I'm working on a new project called X, uh, called Chem Machina. <laughs> Nice. Well which, done. Yeah, yeah, which is basically a... Uh, <laughs> um, for people who don't understand the pun, Ex Machina is a great uh, film about, I guess, AGI embodied, and chem is the chemistry version of that. And I only know one way to embody intelligence, that's in chemistry and human brains. Mm -hmm. So category error number one is agency. They have agency. Category error number two is saying that assuming that anything we make is gonna be more intelligent. Now, you didn't say super intelligent. Mm -hmm. I'll put the words into our mouths here, super mm -hmm. intelligent. Sure. That, I think that um, there is no, no reason to expect that we are gonna make systems that are more intelligent, more capable. You know, when people play chess computers, they don't expect to win now, right? They just, the chess computer is very good at chess. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean it's super intelligent. So I think that super intelligence, I mean, I think even Nick Bostrom is is pulling back on this now because he invented this. So I see this a lot. When did it first happen? Eric Drexler, nanotechnology, atomically precise machines. He came up with a world where we had these atom cogs everywhere. They were going to, we're going to make self-replicating -repli nanobots. Mm -hmm. Not possible. Why? Because there's no resources to build these self-replicating nanobots. Mm -hmm. You can't get the precision. It doesn't work. It was a major category error in taking engineering principles down to the molecular level. The only functioning molecular technology we know, na sorry, the only functioning nanomolecular technology we know produced by evolution. There. Mm -hmm. So now let's go forward to AGI. What is AGI? We don't know. It's super. It can do this. Or can, humans can't think. That I would argue the only AGIs that exist in the universe are produced by evolution. And sure, we may be able to make our working memory better. We might be able to, be able to do more things. The human brain is the most compact computing unit in the universe. It uses 20 watts. It uses a really limited volume. It's not like a chat GPT cluster which has to have thousands of watts a model that's generated and has to be corrected by human beings you are autonomous and embodied intelligence so i think that there are so many levels that we're missing out we've just kind of went oh we've discovered fire oh gosh the planet's just going to burn one day randomly mm -hmm. i mean i just don't understand that leap there are bigger problems we need to worry about 
so what is the motivation? Why are these people, let's assume they have their earnest, have this conviction? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's just, it's kind of, they're making leaps that they're trapped in a virtual reality that isn't reality. Well, I mean, I can continue a set of arguments here, but also it is true that ideologies that fear monger are dangerous because you can then use it to control, to to regulate in a way that uh, halts progress, to control people, and to uh, to cancel people, all that kind of stuff. So you have to be careful because you, you, reason ultimately wins, right? But there, there is a lot of concerns with super intelligent systems, with very capable systems. When you, I think, when I, when you hear the word super intelligent, you're hearing like it's smarter than humans in every way that humans are smart. But the paperclip manufacturing system doesn't need to be smart in every way, it just needs to be smart in a set of specific ways. And the more uh, capable the AI systems become, the more you could see us giving them control over, like I said, our power grid, a lot of aspects of human life. And then that means they will be able to do more and more damage when there's unintended consequences that come to life. I, yeah. I think that that's right, the, the unintended consequences we have to think about, and I'm, that I fully, I fully agree with. But let's go back a bit. Sentient, I mean, I'm, again, I'm far away from my comfort zone and all this stuff, but hey, let's talk about it, because well, I, I give myself a qualification. Yeah, we're both qualified and sentient, I think, yeah, so as, as much as anyone else. I think the paperclip scenario is a, just such a poor one, because let's think about how that would happen. Um, and also, let's think about we are being so um, unrealistic about how much of the Earth's surface we have commandeered. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for paper clip manufacturing to really happen, I mean, do the math. It's like, it's, it's not going to happen. There's not enough energy. There's not enough resource. Where is it all going to come from? I think that what happens in evolution is really, it, why is... Why has a killer virus not killed out all of not killed all life on Earth? Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is, sure, super killer viruses that kill the ribosome have emerged. But you know what happens? They nuke a small space mm -hmm. because they can't propagate. Mm -hmm. They all die. So there's this interplay between evolution and propagation, right, and death. And so in evolution, it, it, you don't it, think it's possible to engineer, for example, sorry to interrupt, but like a perfect virus? No, that's deadly enough. No, like nonsensical. Okay. I think that just wouldn't, again, it wouldn't work. So it was too deadly. It would just kill the radius and not replicate. Yeah. I mean, but you don't think it's possible to get a... You're, I mean, if you were super... I mean, I, if you were... It, it, not kill all of life on Earth, but kill all humans. There's not many of us. There's only like 8 billion. There's, there's so much more ants. I mean, I don't... I So many more ants. <laughs> and I, they're pretty smart. I think we the nice thing about what we're where we are, I would love for the AI crowd to take a leaf out of the book of the bio warfare, chemical warfare crowd. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, not love, because actually people have been killed with chemical weapons in the first and second world war, and people and bioweapons have been made, and you know, we can argue about COVID nineteen and all this stuff. Let's not go there just now. But I think there is a consensus that some certain things are bad and we shouldn't do them, right? And um, and sure, it would be possible for a bad actor to to engineer something bad, but the the damage would be we would see it coming, mm -hmm. and we would be able to do something about it. Um, now, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, when people talk about doom, and they just when you ask them for the mechanism, they just say. Um, you know, they just make something up. I'm, I mean, in this case, I'm with Yann LeCun. I think he put out a very good point about trying to regulate jet engines before we've even invented them. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying we should, I just don't understand why these guys are going around making, literally making stuff up about us all dying. Yeah. When basically we need to actually really focus on. Now, let's say there's some actors are earnest, mm -hmm. right? Let's say Yudakowski is being earnest, right? And he really cares, but in the, but he loves it. He goes, and then you're all going to die. Yeah. It's like you know, why don't we try and do the same thing? And say you could do this, and then you're going to be happy forever after. Yeah, you know. Well, I I think uh, there's several things to say there. Uh, one, I think there is a role in society for people that say we're all going to die, because I think 
uh, it filters through as a message, as a viral message that gives us the proper amount of uh, concern. So, okay, all right. Like, meaning not the, it's not 95%, but when you say 95% and it filters through society, it'll give an average of like a 0.03%, an average. So it's nice to have people that are like, we're all gonna die, then we'll have a proper concern. Like for you, example, <laughs> I do believe we're not properly concerned about the threat of nuclear weapons currently. Like that, that it just seems like people have forgotten that that's a thing. And you know, there's a war in Ukraine with the nuclear power involved. There's nuclear power throughout the world, and it just feels like we're on the brink of a potential world war to a percentage that I don't think people are properly calibrating, like in their head. We're all thinking it's a Twitter battle as opposed to like actual threat. So like, it's nice to have that kind of level of concern. But to me, like what I when I hear AI doomers, what I'm imagining is with un unintended consequences, a potential situation where, uh, let's say 5% of the world suffers deeply because of a mistake made of unintended consequences. I don't imagine the entirety of human civilization dying, but there's could be a lot of suffering if this is done poorly. I, I understand that. And I'm I kind of I guess I mean I'm involved in the whole hype cycle. Like why what I would like us to I don't want us to so what's happening right now is there seems to be so let me let's say having some people saying AI AI doom is a worry. Mm -hmm. Fine, let's give them that. But it what seems to be happening is there seems to be people who don't think AI is doing they're trying to use that to control regulation and to push sure. people to regulate where which which stops humans generating knowledge. Yep. And I am an advocate for generating as much knowledge as possible. Mm -hmm. When it comes to nuclear weapons, I grew up in the 70s and 80s where the where nuclear doom, every, a lot of adults were really had existential threat, mm -hmm. almost as bad as now with AI doom. They were really worried, right? There was some great, well, not great, there were some hor horrific documentaries. I think there was one called Fred's that was generated in the uk which it was like it was terrible it was like so scary um and i think that the correct thing to do is obviously get rid of nuclear weapons but let's think about unintended consequences we've got rid of <laughs> this is such a non-secular we got rid of all the sulfur particles in the atmosphere right all the all the soot mm -hmm. and what's happened in the last couple of years is global warming has accelerated because we've cleaned up the atmosphere too much mm -hmm. So <laughs> sure, I mean the same thing. If you get rid of nuclear weapons, you're gonna I, exactly. Secure. That's my point. Is if, if so, what we could do is if we actually started to put the AI in charge, which is I really like an AI to be in charge of all world politics. And this just sounds ridiculous for a second. Hang on, but if we could all agree on the, the AI doomers just woke up. Yeah, 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 on yeah. That statement. But I really don't like politicians who are basically just looking at lo local sampling. But if you could say globally, look. Here's some game theory here. There's how, what is the minimum number of nuclear weapons we need to dist distribute around the night, the world to everybody to basically re re reduce war to zero? I mean, just the start experiment of the United States and China and Russia and major nuclear powers get together and say, all right, we're going to distribute nuclear weapons to, to every single nation on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean... That has a g probably greater than 50% chance of eliminating major military conflict. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not 100%. But it, but I don't think anyone will use them. Because I think, I th and look, what you've got to try and do is like, for to qualify for these nuclear weapons, <laughs> I can't, this is a great idea. The game theorists could do this, right? Uh -huh. I think w the question is this. I, I really buy your question. We have too many nukes. Um, yep. From just from a feeling point of view that we've got too many of them. So let's reduce the number, but not get rid of them because we'll have too much conventional warfare. So then what is the minimum number of nuclear weapons we can distribute around to, to remove what hum, humans hurting each other is something we should stop doing. It's in, it's not out with our our conceptual capability. But right now, what about the nations, certain nations that are being um, exploited for their natural resources in the future because for a short-term gain because we don't want to generate knowledge. And and so if everybody had an equal doomsday switch, mm -hmm. I, I predict the quality of life of the average human will go up faster. I am an optimist and I believe that humanity is going to get better and better and better, that we're going to eliminate more problems. 
Um, but I think, yeah. That's the- but uh, the probability of a bad actor of one of the nations setting off a nuclear weapon. Mm. I mean, you have to you have to integrate that into the. But we we get we just give you the nucle- nukes like population, right? Uh-huh. We give what we do is we. <laughs> but anyway, let's just just go there. Yeah. Let's say so. If a, if a small nation with a couple of nukes uses one because they're a bit bored or annoyed, they're gonna they the likelihood that they are going to be pummeled out of existence immediately is one hundred percent. And yet they've only they've only nuked one other city. I know this is crazy, and I apologize for. Well, no, no. I think this just to be clear, we're just having a thought experiment that's interesting. But you know, there's terrorist organizations that would take that would take would take that trade yeah i and mean that, look, I'm, I'm and not... w- we have to ask ourselves a question of how many which percentage of humans would be suicide bombers essentially where, where they would sacrifice their own life to to uh because they hate another group of people and that i believe it's a very small fraction but is it large enough to uh if you give out nuclear weapons I can predict a future where we take all nuclear material and we burn it for energy, right? As because we're, we're getting there. And the other thing you could do is say, look, there's a gap. So if we get all the countries to sign up to the virtual nuclear agreement where we all exist, we have a simulation yeah. where we can nuke each other in the simulation, and the and the economic consequences are catastrophic. Sure, in the simulation, I love it. It's not going to kill all humans. It's just going to have economic consequences. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just made it up. It seems like no. A cool it's interesting. Idea. I mean, it's, but it's interesting whether that would have as much power on human psychology as actual physical nuclear. I think explosion. so. It's because possible, but people don't take economic consequences as seriously. I think as actual nuclear weapons. I think explode. they do in Argentina, and they do in Somalia, and they do in a lot of these places where no, I. I think this is a great idea. I'm a strong advocate now for... So what have we come up with? Burning burning all the nuclear material to have energy. Mm-hmm. And before we do that, because MAD is good, mutually assured destruction is very powerful. Let's take it into the metaverse mm-hmm. and then get people to kind of um, uh, subscribe to that. And if they actually nuke each other, even for fun in the metaverse, there are mm-hmm. dire consequences. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a video game. We all have to join this metaverse video game. Yeah. I can't <laughs> and then believe it. Dire just... economic consequences. We're... I don't know how, and uh, it's all run by AI, as you mentioned. Which, so the AI doomers is, are really terrified at this point. No, I mean, they're happy. They have a job for another twenty years, right? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> fear mongering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. I'm a believer in equal employment.